Hello Ratbags, this is Jay Plays Games. welcome back to another Ark Survival Vault tutorial video. Today the Shield and Sword has finally come to console on PlayStation. It will be hitting Xbox very soon, so I'm going to show you guys how to spawn it in. It's really simple. Not only that, I'm going to be showing you guys how to actually spawn in the tech light, how you can paint the tech light, and how you can actually colour everything pretty much like the sword and shield, and how to use it. So we're going to be using the Giphy commands, there are the long massive commands you can use but the Giphy is the simple one, GFI, leave a space, type in shield, then T, leave a space, type in 1, leave a space, type in 0, leave a space, type in 0. You'll notice that I'm on the island, I want to show you guys that you can actually spawn these in on any map, it doesn't have to be Ragnarok. Ragnarok is where you do get them legitimately but if you just want to spawn them in to have some fun you can do it on any single map. Okay, next up we've got the Tech Sword. It's GFI, leave a space, Tech, SW, leave a space, 1, leave a space, 0, leave a space, 0. And then once you've done it, obviously press R2 or RT to done. Click on the admin command and there you go. The Tech Sword has appeared. So now I've got the shield, now I've got the sword. Now remember, if you actually want to use them, you need to make sure you have unlocked the engrams by either defeating the bosses, so you still need to do it by going to either Ragnarok and defeating the bosses, or using the cheat command, give engrams. That will allow you to use any tech tier item. Now, just in case you don't know, this is how you spawn in element. You don't even need to write in the four words. Just put E-L-E-M, do the rest of the Giphy commands, and Bob's your uncle, Fanny's your aunt. There you go. I've got some element to charge up the shield and the sword. They do work. You do need the actual element to charge it. Otherwise, it's going to be pretty much useless. And just like any other normal item, you can see there, it's got its base damage. It's got its durability, etc. I imagine if you increase the quality, you should be able to increase the actual amount it can take, etc. So what the Tech Sword does is around 200 damage, it's also very effective against metal structures and metal as long as you use the charge attack. So it's a pretty formidable piece of equipment. To activate the charge attack you press LT or L2 and then release and it should do it just like it does with the Tech Punch. That's the animation or that's the way it works. You can do it while holding a shield, it doesn't affect anything, you will still use the sword to attack someone. I just happen to have the shield in my hand. Don't do what I do here right now though and not put God Mode on and decide to have a little fly because when you land you're going to go dead. Bran bread. Okay, so we've moved on to Ragnarok now. I wanted to show you guys how to actually see if there was a way we could kill the bosses. Maybe you don't want to cheat too much. Maybe you want to just spawn the bosses in. Maybe your server or your friends want to attack the bosses, but you can't be bothered bringing all that gear in for the actual tribute. Unfortunately, it doesn't work. I spawned in both bosses. I spawned in the Dragon Boss and the actual uh, Manticore Boss separately. And while you unlock the Tech Engrams associated with both of them this way, you don't have to go to the arena to do it. It doesn't give you the Sword or the Shield Engrams. So if you did want to do it half legitimately, but you didn't want to have to go to the arena, you're going to have to go to the arena. That's the only way you can unlock the sword and the tech shield half legitimately or completely full officially. As you can see from killing the dragon's big toe, it'll unlock lots of them, but it just doesn't give you either the sword or the actual shield. So you do have to do it in the arena. That might be a silly point, like why are you going to bother doing that when you can just spawn it in? But for some people, they generally might want to just spawn in the bosses to have a fight with them. They don't necessarily want to have to go to the arena, so that's the reason they might have done it this way. But it just doesn't work. I tried the same with the Manticore. I used the kill commands against it, and funnily enough, the Manticore does attack you, the dragon doesn't. And as you can see, it only gives you the gauntlets, generator, trough, and rifle. This was on beta. You have to do this on beta to get some of them. If you do it on gamma, you might not get the same results. I will be doing a guide on how to show you exactly every single piece that unlocks with every single boss just so that you know in the future if you're doing it legitimately. Now wrap bags I'm going to show you how to do the tech light and again it's really simple GFI leave a space type in tech light leave a space type in one leave a space zero leave a space zero obviously if you change the one you can put 20 and it will spawn in however many you want but i've just shown you how to spawn in one i've done it a few times and there you go i spawned in six lights i'm going to show you exactly how to place them the benefit of these are that you don't need any generators as long as you've got tech elemental shards you can place them anywhere pretty much and they will just go for ages i mean you get about 45 minutes supposedly on one tech shard so that's pretty good going you can use the tech generator to power it so if you do use them around your base as long as the tech generator is there you won't need the elemental shards the tech generator will do the job as you can see you can 
and place them directly on the ground but you can't place them on trees or anything that you could harvest so I went around just testing it mucking around you can see still can't place it on rocks but you can place it on top of the cliff side so they're really good if you're going in caves you can obviously just put them on the walls you don't have to build any structures or anything like that you can just put them down and you'll be able to see exactly where you're going the code for this and all the codes will be in the description of the video, but you can see a GFI, leave a space, elements, shards. In fact, just put element and then just put SH and it will give you the shards that you need. Once you've done that, all you've simply got to do then is put them into the inventory. It can be a little bit buggy putting them in there. I would suggest using the give all or hold down on the actual shards and they should go into it. If they still won't go in, just keep coming in and out of your inventory and popping them in and it should be fine once you get going. Of course, remember you still need to use the give engrams code as well. So don't forget if you've jumped maps or you've logged out, you still may need to use the give engrams command, otherwise, it may not work. And there you go, I turned it on, there is the light. So it's a bit hard to see in daytime exactly how much good they're doing. So let's change it to nighttime and see what happens. FYI, they are extremely bright. You will not need a lot of these. I'd say one or two of them, and that is pretty much will give you a lot of light. I've got about four or five here. It is a bit blinding. So as soon as I put it onto nighttime, you can see the difference. Look how light it is, and that's meant to be dark. It's really good. It makes it really look like a spotlight. You can see the light on the tree. Look how much light them five actually give. In fact, only one of them would actually give just as much light because it, they're close together. It doesn't really make a difference. If you hold the triangle button on it or the Y button, you can actually change the strength of it to like high or medium or low. And the best bit, you can pick them up. You don't lose anything with these. You won't have to re -lose, make them. You can just pick up the lights and take them with you. Just remember though, you've got to pick up the shards that you've left inside. As you can see, they're just floating around in the little bags. Okay, so I'm gonna quickly run down and show you guys exactly the strength of them, the higher, the medium, low, so you can really see the difference. At the moment, it's currently high. That's how much light it gives. It's pretty strong, like I told you. It's really flashing up hot, really strongly on that tree, and it's quite a distance away. Now let's put it down to medium and see what kind of distance it does. A bit of a softer glow you can see on the tree. It's definitely much softer. It's not as harsh. And then if we put it all the way onto the bottom one, the low, and you can see, yeah, it's not as much light at all. So you really can change the mood. You really can change what you're doing with the lights. They don't necessarily have to be blinding you, particularly on console where you can't change any of the light settings to reduce the glare. Right, time to get my disco going. Who wants some lights action? Let's not have boring white light. Let's get some color up in here. The code for the actual spray paint is GFI lever space weapon spray paint lever space one lever space zero lever space zero. That will give you the spray paints and you can go ahead and add the colors and it's much easier and quicker to paint or do whatever you want to do with them. If you want all the colors, if you don't know, it's give colors, no spaces, lever space, type in how many you want. It is the American way of spreading it as well, so don't use the British way, make sure you use the American way. And that's it, get your spray can, put your colour or your painting on it, and you can go a little bit mad. Create your own disco lights. It's going to be really good for people that want to do more builds, colourful builds particularly. People used to use a lot of the artefacts for lighting, all my friends used to. And look at that, it is mad. It doesn't actually make the actual light, it doesn't seem like the light changes colour. But the glow from around the light tends to make it change color if that makes sense when you look at it you can see the actual light shades the light cells look still white it's all around it has actually changed color well that one's that one's a bit different i don't know i guess maybe it's just red that looks like that but yeah red green whatever you want to do there is only one color region that you can paint you can't just paint the rest of it maybe you want to make it look a different color unfortunately you can't do that when you use a spray paint on it you can only make one region different colored but of course it's the most important region it's so that you can make bright lights and look at that that is a little bit of a, a, a little clue as to what's gonna expect once i get this video done and dusted i want to show you what it looked like on the floor as well you can see the yellow how much light it gives you really makes me think of aberration the trailer the way the lights were like burning up and down with all the different colors and the mad crystals so it'd be cool to see some of this as well utilized if if that is the case in aberration maybe tech tier won't even be a thing in aberration we don't know yet um you can see me just adjusting it and changing the colors some colors are really bright obviously with the actual tech tier lights i don't know if they're the same when you use just normal lighting let me know whether or not some colors are really bright or not um, do you have to always avoid them because they're too bright or are some really nice to use right time for the sword now and the shield let's paint these two bad boys up and see what we can actually do with them after i quickly show you look how much damage it done there to a trudon get the bloody little trudon 
simply choose a paint, pop it onto your shield or your sword and then you can go mad color in the regions. The first region is the glass, the see-through part, so if you want that first part, it's region one. The rest of them do different things. I'm just going to show you what it looks like with a little bit of pink on the actual glass. And I'll use a few other multiple colors just to show you guys what it could look like. You can't really tell from this angle, but once you actually open it up, look, look how pink it's gone. Nah, that is a bit crazy. I like that. I like the idea you can have your different colored Power Rangers with their colorful swords and their shields as well. And the same for the tech sword, region 1 is the actual shaft, is the glowy part of the sword. If you want to change anything else you can do. And look, I've got a green shaft, a green shaft, no it's a green blade, sorry, excuse me, wrong show. Um, and yeah, you just mad. it's just a bit mad, a bit of fun. Uh, I'm not too keen on mad colours, but I know some people like having it. It's just a bit of fun. If you go mad, if it's your game and you're already using cheats and stuff to colour it in and do stuff with it, like your dinosaurs, then why not colour in all your armour and your weapons as well? The green looks pretty good, actually. I ain't going to lie. I was quite surprised. I should try some more colours. I really like that shot. I'm debating which one to use for the screenshot. Is it going to be that or the next shot in a minute? But there you go. That is how you use tech lighting. That's how you colour them. That's how you spawn them all in on any map. And what you can't do in terms of either getting them legitimately or not. And just showing you what it's like in third person when you actually use the attack mode. It's pretty cool. It is exactly like the same animation for using your power glove with the tech glove um, attack as well. So yeah, go ahead. Go and have some fun with it. Let me know what you're going to be doing with it. Are you hyped about getting a sword and shield? The shield, by the way, does reflect incoming damage as long as it's charged so it will reflect all projectile weapons the sword obviously does around 200 damage like i said it's very good for defending or attacking against metal objects i am j plays games if this tutorial has helped you hit me up with a like go and check out all my other tutorials i haven't done as many as i have done in the past but i've got playlist and playlist of tutorials and guides if you're brand new to arc you need to go and check them out and i'll see you rat bags later